we're here doing a knee replacement on the left knee for this female. And we are going robotic today. Every surgery begins with the exposure, and so that's what we're doing now. Anytime you put in a knee replacement, the two main things we strive for are balancing the ligaments in the knee. And then the other thing we strive for is good alignment. So the robot doesn't actually do the surgery. We still do the surgery. The robot sort of takes the place of the traditional instrumentation. And so we are using the robot to position our cutting blocks rather than using our traditional instrumentation to position the cutting blocks. Because we're using the robot, we have to put in what are called trackers. These guys, there's a camera right over here, takes pictures of this, and it, by having these different angles everywhere, this one's fixed to the shin bone, there's another fixed to the femur. The computer's able to read where these are in space and figure out where the leg is. And the importance of putting these in is make sure your ligaments are balanced, and that's what we're doing now. The robot moved it in, we just bring it right down to the femur a little bit. Kind of moving it to position it a little bit better. If you look at the screen, it tells us we are spot on where we want to be. So now we pin it into place. It doesn't make the cuts for us, it just kind of tells us where to position our block and that's what that just did. You saw us, we just put that where we wanted it, but then did the cuts ourselves. So what these tools like this do, it allows us to validate our cuts to make sure that they're exactly where we planned on them being. When I say plan for a 12, that's how thick the tibial insert is, the piece that goes between the thigh bone, metal, and then metal below, shin bone piece, and then this is a plastic high molecular weight polyethylene that will, that's kind of becomes our new joint surface. The vast majority of knee replacements that are done are cemented, so you want to make sure that the cement and the bone interdigitate real well. You get a good bond of the cement to the bone. So we want to get that. She's mixing back there. You mix it for a set amount of time to get optimal uh, consistency on the cement. Have it interdigitate the bone well. If you wait too long and it gets too hard, then you might not get as good a cement mantle. If you do it too quickly, it's real liquidy and difficult to work with. Get the bone surfaces nice and dry. And then this is the bone cement that she was mixing up. She's put some on the back of the shin bone piece for me, the tibial component. So what we do is we put it on both the component and on the bone and then pop it in there. Cement on the bone, cement on the component. Take out the excess cement. So that's that plastic piece. We put the shin piece down, the, the metal part, then the plastic, and then bring your thigh bone up. So you can see the entire end of the implant is a bearing surface, right? I mean, all the shiny stuff is a bearing surface. A good portion of it rubs on the plastic here. Another good portion of it rubs on this plastic here, which run, the kneecap runs in this groove and the thigh bone and the shin bone come together right here. When we look at our alignment, we want to be less than three degrees off of a neutral alignment and we're at 1.5 degrees. So that's. That's good there. So we're gonna do one last quick validation. We got, and we're still in that one to one and a half degree of varus alignment, which is well within our three degree limit either way. Now we finish up, take out those trackers, take care of the bleeding and wash it out and close it up. Well, they'll start getting up today and moving around with therapy today. The block doesn't inhibit the motor function. And so hopefully she'll be able to get up and move around with therapy today. We do more therapy tomorrow. The second 24 hours is just making sure the pain is adequately controlled and then she could go home, continue with therapy. She'll get therapy in the hospital, continue with therapy at home for a couple weeks and then we transition over into outpatient therapy. First three months, you're getting your motion back. Most people have probably 90% of the motion they're gonna get at three months. That second three month period of time, from three to six months, patients will, you know, the little things, achiness at night, stiffness when you get up in the morning, that kind of stuff will fade away. And then the last six months, from six months to a year, that's when all of the stuff kind of goes away and everything. And that's a robotic knee.